Is it audible? Good. We good? All right. Welcome, everyone. Thank you for, uh, for coming out post-lunch. Um, yeah, I'm glad you all could make it to the session. Um, my name is Rahul Sharma, and I'm uh, the Principal Product Manager for our Container Products at uh, Dell. And today, I'll be talking about our open source storage solutions for our cloud-native stateful applications. I guess just by a show of hands, we've got a few people in the audience here. How many of you have stateful applications running in your environments at your organizations? Okay. Good to hear that. And how many of you, by a show of hands, have like more than one cloud running in your environment? Like public cloud, private, more than one public? Okay. All right. So, you know, let's just agree that, you know, we're all in, in a multi-cloud world. We had this announcement at Dell Tech World, and we talked about how, you know, it's, it's not just going to be just public cloud or just pri private cloud. It's going to be like a blend of these two environments. And, uh, you know, we, we, we found some research to support that. So we, uh, we did some research with IDC where we found that more than 90% of, uh, of companies worldwide will rely on a mix of private, public, you know, more than one public cloud environments. And, and we see that reflected in a lot of our customer environments today. And, and speaking of this multi-cloud environment, I think in a stateful application context, what our customers are looking for is really that, uh, that consistent experience across, uh, across private cloud, public cloud, and have just that you know, consistency in setting up storage for their stateful applications. So, you know, when you think about stateful applications, what do you, you know, believe are the, you know, most significant challenges for, for the stateful applications that, that customers are, are running in their environments? And, and we see uh, a number of them. Uh, high availability is a key one. Uh, you know, uh, you know the, the uh, stateful workloads and persistent storage has been around for a while, but the problem of, high availability is not you know, fully solved. And we'll talk about how at Dell we're approaching this problem and you know, what kind of products we have out there to address that problem. We see a lot of customers you know, who have traditional roles. Some have like storage admins or storage engineers who are still getting up to speed with containers and cloud native uh, skill sets and Kubernetes skill sets. And then we have, uh, on the other hand, um, a set of customers that are really good at uh, setting up their cloud native environments with Kubernetes and containers, but they don't have as much knowledge of the storage side of the equation. So we're trying to fill the gap there. Um, compliance and security, you know, as we heard this morning as well in the keynote, it's, it's a major concern with stateful uh, applications. Uh, cost control is another one that comes up in many, many customer conversations. Um, you know, we hear, um, you know, all, all kinds of cases, but, you know, one case that stands out to me is where this customer mentioned uh, sort of like a mid-state startup, and they were like, you know, we've been, we started off in the public cloud, and we thought, you know, we'll have the benefit of that flexibility and elasticity, and what they found was that um, ultimately they just lost complete control of their uh, costs. And they came to us and they asked us, hey, how do we rebuild that in our private cloud environment where we can actually control those costs? Um, so that's another major challenge that we see. And finally, application portability and deployment. Now with containers, it's, it's easy, uh, you know, like portability is just like a, 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 principal, um, a principal driving containers in terms of mobility and portability. Uh, but what's uh, the missing piece is the mobility of volumes that are associated with those containers um, and cloud native applications. And we'll talk about how we're solving for that. So in terms of uh, the environments that we see customers running today um, for their stateful applications, we see customers that have a mix of uh, you know, either their container orchestrator, Kubernetes running on bare metal. We see some customers having 
a virtualized uh, cloud native environment. And with some customers, we see a blend of the two. Um, and and that's, that's really the most common operating model that we see customers using today. Um, now, irrespective of that model, what they do need, uh, you know, underpinning that environment is the infrastructure elements, the compute, the storage, and the networking. And what I'll be focusing on today is how we are enabling customers to set up their persistent storage for their cloud native applications. So we have three key products in this space today. We have our CSI drivers based on the CSI specification from the Kubernetes community. We have our container storage modules that offer advanced like enterprise data services that are built on top of the CSI spec and the CSI foundation. And then we have, from a data protection standpoint, we have the Power Protect Data Manager that can protect your Kubernetes or containerized workloads. What I'll be focusing on is just our CSI plugins and our container storage modules. So speaking of our CSI plugins, we've got uh, basically a CSI plugin for all kinds of Kubernetes workloads. Whether it's block, you know, we've got a scale-out uh, software-defined storage with PowerFlex, We've got a really high-end uh, block storage in PowerMax and many financial services and financial institutions use. And we've got a unified storage with a block and file on a single platform with PowerStore um, as well. Um, in terms of vWalls, for any of you who use the Tanzu, um, uh, you know, Tanzu environment, you can leverage vWalls, SPBMs, and we support that through both NFS, our NFS CSI drivers, or you use CNS to access block storage. And again, in terms of file shares, you know, if you want, if you have sort of an environment where your pods are directly ac accessing NFS shares, we've got the power scale storage, or you know, if you want to use the CSI driver to spin up your NFS environments, we've got the power scale storage out there. Um, from an object storage sta standpoint, we just, you know, um, at Dell Tech World announced Object Scale, which is going to be a new object storage platform. So for any of your object storage needs, you can always use that. Uh, so today, your Kubernetes clusters can access that through the object store APIs. Um, in the future, as some of you may know, there's a new specification coming out called Container Object Storage Interface. So we'll have a co driver that's going to uh, enable you to um, set up your, your object storage in a private cloud environment with Kubernetes cluster using that co driver. So that's coming out shortly. Um, so, you know, whether it comes to um, any kind of Kubernetes distribution, uh, you know, or all of the major Kubernetes distributions, whether it's EKS, Rancher, Kubernetes Engine, Azure Stack HCI, Google Anthos, Tanzu, OpenShift, Mirantis Kubernetes Engine, we basically support and qualify all of these major distributions out there. And you know, it doesn't matter what workload you're running on it, whether it's a database, whether it's an analytics workload, whether it's an AI ML kind of application, you know, we support all of those today from a uh, stateful application perspective. Um, and of course, we've got HCI products as well, you know, things like VxRail, um, PowerFlex, and of course, the storage I just described, and we've got data protection as well that is qualified on, on most of the popular Kubernetes distributions out there. So from a Tanzu perspective, um, you know, like I described, you know, uh, whether it's um, whether you're using sort of you know policy driven dynamic provisioning, you can do that on Tanzu with our storage in the back end. If it's block, you can use uh, you know vWalls with VMFS and SPBMs. When it's file, you can use our NFS CSI drivers to use them in the back end as file storage for your Kubernetes clusters running on Tanzu. And you know we're seeing uh, a lot of adoption uh, in that uh, in this kind of like configuration picking up. So, um, you know, if you, have any, if you have any questions about that, feel free to, uh, you know, feel free to have a chat offline or come to the booth later, and we can dive into the details there. So now, let's talk about, like, what's not covered by the CSI spec or the CSI drivers. Like, apart from the standard volume creation, deletion, update, resizing, cloning operations, uh, what's not covered? Monitoring is not covered. So we're addressing that through observability. Uh, uh, DR is not covered, replication is not covered. So we're plugging that gap through our container storage modules for replication that are uh, purpose-built for our storage arrays, leveraging 
the native replication capabilities on our storage arrays. Uh, from an authorization perspective, there is Kubernetes RBAC available today, but what it doesn't do is quota management. So we are plugging that gap with our authorization CSM module. You can do quota management, uh, you know, uh, storage admins, they can set up, um, they can, they can basically set up tenants, assign them a JWT token, set up a quota, and enforce that quota for those tenants. In terms of resiliency, so what we're doing with resiliency is identify any kind of like hardware failure, Kubernetes control plane, uh, control plane failure, uh, or any kind of network failure, and we can uh, reschedule pods um, automatically. We've automated that workflow where whenever there's a node failure or hardware failure, it can automatically uh, reschedule the pod, unmap the volume from it, remap the volume to the rescheduled pod on a healthy node. In terms of volume placement, uh, that's a module that's, that's on the roadmap for now. But the idea there is that we plan to basically, uh, you know, whenever a developer fires off a PVC, uh, a PVC request, they would be able to match uh, those PVCs with the array based on the performance characteristics, whether it's SSD, HDD, NVMe, or uh, you know, or they could even it could match with arrays based on the available free capacity on those arrays, so that there's better load balancing. And then we also uh, added an enhancement on the snapshot feature through the CSI driver, which is the volume group snapshots. And what it what it does it basically enables um, crash consistent uh, crash consistent backups of your applications. So what you can do is you can take a snapshot of a group of volumes together where you have your um, you know, application deployed and um, you can do that through the sidecar that we've, that we've created so that you've got, you, know, you maintain referential integrity and you have a crash consistent backup of your applications. So now let's dive into some of the details and you know, I can even, uh, I'll even provide a demo for each of these modules. So for the observability module, uh, what we're doing is we are leveraging the open telemetry collector, uh, which, which scrapes the performance data, the capacity utilization data from the storage arrays. It stores that data in Prometheus, and we visualize that in Grafana dashboards. And what it, uh, what it shows the customers is storage pool consumption, the, the system I.O. performance. It basically uh, shows the, the provision volume topology. And, and all of the key characteristics that, you, that you're looking to observe from a storage perspective for your stateful applications. And the way to deploy it today is through Helm charts. We're also adding that to our operator as well. So let's look at uh, one of the demos. So you see we are using a Rancher Kubernetes engine here. We, um, uh, you know, we, we, we see that we've got our hotel collector available in the, in the marketplace. You deploy the collector. We've also got our Grafana dashboard set up here with Prometheus in the back end, and you see all of the key usage characteristics, memory usage, uh, file system usage, topology data, um, and, and we're using our PowerFlex storage array in the back end here for, for demonstration purposes. And you can even see that topology view with, uh, you know, with, with, with Kubernetes, which shows you all of the provision volumes and what array they're, uh, they're connected to. And here is a view of the uh, capacity utilization through the observability module. And in the future, we'll be adding customizations to these dashboards as well. And here you can see all of the, the performance characteristics of the arrays that have been uh, made available through the observability module. So let's talk about replication. Um, and that this really is like one of the, the, the key differentiators for us when it comes to uh, supporting uh, stateful applications and containerized workloads. Uh, uh, I'm not sure how many of you have heard about our SRDF capability on PowerMax for our block storage array. So um, for containerized workloads, we basically extended that SRDF capability for PowerMax to Kubernetes through our CSM replication module. So we've got a, 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 we've got a sidecar that runs on the controller, master nodes, and the worker nodes, and we've created a command line utility called RepCTL that you can use for, um, 
for filling over volumes to your DR site. You can fill them back, you can reprotect them, and it basically supports uh, both uh, a stretched cluster configuration or a replica cluster configuration. And similarly, for your file storage needs for PowerScale, we're leveraging SyncIQ uh, today. And uh, you know, similarly, we'll be leveraging our array replication capabilities and extending them to Kubernetes. So authorization. Um, so like I mentioned, you know, for Kubernetes today, there is a native RBAC capability, but what it lacks is the ability to do quota management and enforcement. And how we enable that is we basically, uh, we deploy a proxy between our CSI drivers and, uh, and the storage system, and we enforce role-based access, and we enforce usage rules. So what the admins can do is they create these tenants, they assign them JWT tokens, uh, the tenants can access the storage based on those, on, on those JWT tokens. They're assigned a quota, and that quota can be enforced by the storage admin. Um, and, and, and we also enable credential shielding. So, you know, like if you've got multiple developers, multiple tenants running on a cluster, they just don't, you know, sort of basically use up all of the storage that you've assigned to a Kubernetes cluster. You can, you can control the usage of storage through the authorization module. And we enable this today through uh, another command line utility that we've created called Karavi Cuttle. Karavi, by the way, was the code name for this, uh, for our container storage modules internally. So on some of our GitHub repos, you might see references to that. So let's look at a demo again. So we're using a Rancher Kubernetes engine, and we have deployed the Helm charts for our authorization uh, CSM module. Um, and we're using a Cockroach DB database for, for this demo. You'll see that uh, you know the storage admin will create a uh, create a tenant here. We'll assign a, a quota to that tenant, and then we'll see that the tenant is 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 being a bit naughty and trying to exceed that capacity. And then and then you'll see that that's denied because you know we've uh, provided that capability to the admin to enforce the the quota that's that's been created. So you see, you know, he sets the the quota limit for. Uh, three, three gigs, and uh, you know you see the, the the tenant listed here, and uh, you know one of the tenants he goes in, or she goes in, she tries to create a, a volume, they try to exceed that uh, that volume capacity, and then you'll see that the request was denied. Not enough quota available. So, you know, this basically really um, just, just demonstrate how we're sort of extending the capabilities uh, that are available on our storage platforms today that the CSI spec lacks. Um, and by the way, all of this, like, like I've already mentioned, is open source, free of charge for all of our customers today. So let's talk about uh, resiliency and how we enable that. So today, when you set up a Kubernetes cluster, you, uh, you, know, you have a hardware failure, so we're sort of demonstrating that right now. We have a, 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 a Kubernetes cluster running with three masters, two workers, with uh, you know, running on, on, uh, on, on vSphere. We disabled, uh, we disabled a VM just to show what will happen to that pod, and you'll see that it's stuck in terminating node. Nothing happens. So how do you solve that? Like, you, know, you generally have to drain the node, and you have to manually intervene and reschedule that pod onto another healthy node. So you know, we, we spoke to customers, and they, they brought this problem to us. And you know, we thought about, how do we fix this problem? And you know, the result of that was the creation of this resiliency module, which is um, essentially a, um, a, a pod monitor sidecar that we created. And what it does, it basically makes the persistent storage more resilient to failures. Um, and, and this pod monitor basically, uh, you know, it's like a, it's a sidecar to the CSI driver. So when you're deploying the drivers with the helm charts, the operator, you can deploy the resiliency sidecar as well. It's deployed on both the controller pods and the masters and the workers. And it basically looks out for any kind of hardware failures. It puts a taint on that node and then it reschedules the pod onto a healthy node, uh, unmaps the, the persistent volume in the backend, remaps the volume to the healthy pods, and 
you know, all of that is done in the back end in an automated fashion. So let's look at a demo for that as well. So again, we're using um, an RKE uh, cluster here, and uh, we've deployed our resiliency sidecar in the back end. We're using a cockroach DB deployed, um, deployed with, uh, you know, on, on a three node uh, environment. And then you'll see that, uh, you'll see, you know, we're, you, you'll see that, uh, you know, we'll, we'll manually disable uh, one of the nodes, the network connect connectivity on one of the nodes, and that uh, in the background, automatically, the, uh, you know, we, the, the sidecar will have put a taint on that node. Um, it will have rescheduled the pod onto another healthy node, and the volume will also automatically have been unmapped and remapped onto the healthy pod. So all of that, all of that is being done in the background, and you'll see that you know right now you see we just manually intervened and killed the killed the node, and then you know soon after you'll see it'll be up and running again like nothing happened. So especially in cases where you have databases running on uh, you know spread across multiple nodes, uh, and you know you want to automate that that resiliency piece of it, have a high you know truly highly available application. I think this this piece is really useful in those kind of use cases. So again, you know, we're just showing those those nodes, and you see it's back up and running again in in that automated way. So, um, you know, as we talk about, um, so just, you know, again, zooming out a little, little bit and, you know, you know talking about our, um, our storage products, um, ultimately what we're trying to enable is, uh, is performance, um, resilience, and scalability. And when you compare that with, uh, with many, of the, many of the products that are out there today, you see that, you know, there really is... Um, no match for um, for our storage products, especially for containerized workloads. Like with PowerFlex, you can get up to 2.2 million IOPS uh, in terms of resiliency. I just demonstrated we have a CSM replication module uh, that enables resiliency, and we also leverage our array native replication capabilities like SRDF for PowerMax, which really enables uh, you know disaster recovery and uh, high availability. And in terms of scalability. On PowerMax, you know you can scale up to you know 64,000 V walls. You can uh, have up to 40,000 uh, NFS exports per cluster and power scale, and uh, you know there really is you know not really not many you know alternatives out there when it comes to that level of scale. So now that we've talked about what's available today, you know we also wanted to we also wanted to sort of um, talk about what we're what we have you know coming out in the future. So we talked about uh, monitoring through observability, DR through replication, quota management, and RBAC through authorization, uh, hardware failure detection and recovery through resiliency, uh, volume placement through intelligent volume placement, um, uh, crash consistent snapshots through volume group snapshots, what next? So we talked about uh, application mobility or portability and deployment as a key challenge. And we're solving that through the application mobility module. And I'll just dive into uh, a few more details about that module. Uh, in addition, another challenge we've heard from customers is that how do they enable encryption for containerized workloads? So we will have another module come out called CSM Secure, which is going to enable data security. It's going to enable encryption of volumes. Uh, and it's going to enable integration with some external key managers, such as HashiCorp Vault. So let's talk about application mobility and how we enable that. So you know. We enable customers today to run uh, to run our persistent storage in the backend for on-prem Kubernetes clusters using our CSI drivers. For customers that have sort of hybrid cloud environments and are using multiple container management platforms or uh, or Kubernetes distributions like Rancher, OpenShift, Mirantis, and Tanzu, they can use our CSI drivers as well to expose our persistent storage in the backend. For public cloud environments, we just announced at Dell Tech World that we'll be bringing our storage operating systems to the public cloud. So even in the public cloud, if you have Kubernetes clusters and cloud-native applications running, you, you will be able to have a similar consistent experience. 
Now that you have those standard, you know, CSI operations enabled, you know, you you would also need some of these enterprise data services that I spoke that I spoke about, like observability, replication, authorization, resiliency, and intelligent volume placement. So we'll enable that on each of these environments. Now, what's missing? What's missing is the capability to move not just the metadata of the applications or the containers, but the volumes that are associated with those containers. So we will enable that through application mobility. And you know, from, you know, through that module, you'll be able to move an application from on-prem to the hybrid cloud, on-prem to the public cloud. If you have a repatriation use case, you'd be able to do that. And uh, uh, you know, we'll, we'll support that, uh, that kind of use case as well through application mobility. So we put a little demo together here that I wanted to show, but um, let me just disable the audio here. So what we did here is like, you know, let's imagine a use case where you have, um, you know, you have uh, an on-prem environment and you have an environment in the public cloud on, on AWS. And what you want to do is, let's say you have a, um, a sort of a blue-green deployment kind of use case, or you just want to do like test dev on an application, take it from an on-prem environment to the public cloud. So how do you do that with just a single command? And what we did was we wrapped up some of the components in the back end, uh, uh, you know, like uh, we use some open source tools like Valero and Restic. We wrapped them up with our controller so what we've done is you see on the left is the on-prem environment, and on the right is the, uh, is, the, um, is the environment in AWS. And what we're going to do is, with a single command, you can move the metadata, metadata of the application and the volumes to that public cloud environment. So you see we've already configured the application. We're using a WordPress application with a MySQL database in the back end. Um, we've already configured the components of application mobility module on both the source cluster and the destination cluster, and we're just sort of you know demonstrating right now uh, the, the the key components in the AWS environment. So you see we've got our, AW, uh, our application mo mobility controllers installed. Uh, we've got the the volumes configured on PowerFlex with our block array, and this is the just the example of WordPress blog that we've created. We created a test entry there. And now what we'll do is we'll use a single command to move the entire application from the on-prem Kubernetes cluster to the AWS EKS cluster. So you, know, you, can, you can have any source cluster or any target cluster, and with a single command, you'll see that soon uh, you know, the, the objects will start backing up uh, or being cloned to the uh, to the S3 environment in, in, in AWS. Um, you'll see then the volumes will start showing up on the right in the AWS EKS environment as well. And then we'll demonstrate through, uh, you know, just, you know, we, we've automated basically the orchestration of that application uh, from, uh, from S3 to EBS volumes and, you know, orchestrating that directly with an EKS cluster so that the application is up and running directly in that AWS EKS cluster. So you see right now that you know, the volumes are backed up to the S3 object store. We see the application data there as well. And now we'll go, through, we'll go to the EKS command line. Uh, we'll, we'll pick up the public, uh, the external IP and we look at that application through that external IP, and you'll see that the same uh, blog that we were running on-prem is running exactly the same with that test entry, uh, you know, exactly the same. So, you know, like there could be many use cases that you could use this for. You could have a resource augmentation use case where you need to run some additional GPUs in the cloud, or you need to just, you know, have like a really uh, a bursty kind of environment in the cloud where you have a very high CPU requirements. You, you let it run in the cloud, and once, you know, again, that season is over, you repatriate back on-prem. And, you know, all of that, uh, all of those tasks are orchestrated through a single command line. So that really is the value here. And uh, you'll see this module come out in the near future. Uh, we did uh, sort of talk, talk about this 
at Dell Tech World, but we'll have a tech preview coming out soon for you to test it out. Um, speaking of uh, encryption and security, as I mentioned, we'll have a CSM secure container storage module, which is going to have a sidecar uh, running that can encrypt your mission critical volumes. We'll also enable integration with external key managers like HashiCorp Vault. So you can you know, create your keys through HashiCorp. You can use that key to, to encrypt a volume. You can seal that key so that no other developer or tenant can, uh, can, can modify that, that volume. And then you can unseal that vault and then you know you can uh, you can use that that volume in an unencrypted unencrypted configuration as well. So that's sort of again like a future-looking module that you'll see come out in in the near future. So all of the demos that I presented today, we we have them available on YouTube. Uh, we've got a blog as well that one of our our VP runs. Really cool blog. I encourage you to check it out. Uh, volumes blog. All of the details that I spoke about today. You can find them on his blog as well. And then in terms of our GitHub repos, I just wanted to provide a few links here and the link to our doc, doc site as well um, in case you want to dive into additional details. So with that, um, yep, we're all done. And by the way, we do have a booth uh, as well um, at the expo floor, so you know, in case you want to Come have a chat with me or with Jen or any of our other colleagues. Feel free to come over and we can you know, dive into additional details. So with that, let me open up to any questions that anyone has. Um, so, so like I said, you know, with all of these like container management platforms today, uh, you know, Dell has compute, network, storage, all kinds of products that support these um, these Kubernetes distributions. So, you know, if, if a customer is is looking to recreate their cloud native environment from, from a public cloud on prem, we actually have reference architectures that are published for Rancher, for OpenShift. Um, I think the team is also working on vanilla Kubernetes environments. So, you know, if they, if, if you know, like, like in this case that I spoke about, um, you know, that's, that's what our recommendation was as well, that they can use those reference architectures to recreate those kind of environments as well. You. You're welcome. Any other questions? All right, I mean, we'll be, we'll be here and um, at the booth as well, so let me know if you have any additional questions. Thank you.